everyone I'm glad you're here thank you very much for joining me there's been a lot of discussion online about Mount St. Helens and its recent activity and if it's going to blow again there has within the last month been 123 earthquakes the last two that USGS got listed is a minus 0 0.1 a 0, 0.0 at minus 1.0 miles in depth and minus 1.1 miles in depth. This would be the upper magma chamber of um, Mount St. Helens. Despite all the years since its last eruption in 1980, there's a lot they do not know about Mount St. Helens. I have two images here of the magma chambers. This one here is the upper shallow magma chamber and then they got a larger magma chamber. Um, below that. Mount St. Helens is the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest. What they have found is a giant magma chamber between um, 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles and then the secondary one which is 12 kilometers or 7.4 miles below the surface. The two chambers appear to be connected in a way that could help explain the sequence of events in the 1980 eruption that blew the lid off of Mount St. Helens. But what they also found is that this deeper magma chamber, which lies just to the east of the shallower chamber, the deeper chamber sits between Mount St. Helens and Mount Adams volcano, and a set of dormant volcanoes called the Indian Heaven Volcanic Field, suggesting that the deep chamber might supply magma to all of them. The e recent earthquakes in the area may be a sign of magma pumping between them, the, the two chambers. Even though right now they're saying that Mount St. Helens isn't going to erupt, they do say that it is at a high risk of erupting. So they still don't know, was the 1980 eruption triggered by an injection of magma into the upper crustal reservoir? And if so, when? How did the magma rise in the edifice without producing detectable seism seismicity deeper than 2.5 kilometers? So that would be 1.5 miles, which they're getting some earthquakes shallower than that. Most of the recent earthquakes have been so south of Mount St. Helens. I'll bring it up over here. And you can see we got, this is actually Mount St. Helens. Um, 1.0 Morton, Washington. Um, this one here is um, Amboy. And we got um, a 0 0.3 uh, Morton. Yeah, here we got Spirit Lake. Give you an idea. So all these are, are on the southern flank of Mount St. Helens. Now this is from the monitor um, from JRO at Mount St. Helens. First thing that caught my eye was up over here was the, the sawtooth, um, yeah, type, yeah, pulsating. And then we got one marked in red. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger right there. Now, they're not reporting this one. It was at uh, 2042 Universal Time, and it's shallow. So that is definitely in the upper magma chamber. And that could be as high as a magnitude 1.18. These here are what you considered or would call drum beats. All this is drum beats. And let me make that bigger. You can see how shallow they are. And this one probably went on for almost a half an hour. And they're constant. They keep showing up. I don't know if I can make that bigger or not. There we go. Okay, drum beats. Yeah, this shows that magma is definitely on the move. Yeah, see that? 
is probably traveling from the lower magma chamber into the upper magma chamber. Now that would have been yesterday or the day before and this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Look at the heat. Yeah, and the water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the lines of melt. I've often talked about this. Look at that. Yeah, it's definitely recharging. So in 1980, they really expected deeper earthquakes, which they were not getting at the time. They weren't getting anything that was deeper than 2.5 kilometers, which is about one and a half miles. And they didn't have any measurable deformation other than the volcano's north flank. Would precursionary activity have been recognized earlier if current monitoring technology had been available? Despite substantial improvements in monitoring capability, similar questions remain after the dome forming eruption in 2004 and 2008. Both of those were small eruptions. They don't know if additional magma accumulated in the reservoir between the end of 1980 and 1986 and the start of 2004 and 2008. They still don't know how magma reached the surface without producing seismicity deeper than two kilometers, which is a little more than one mile in depth. They didn't even have measurable deformation more than a few hundred meters from the vent. They still don't know if the upper reservoir has been replenished since the eruption ended. And is it now prime for the next eruption? They don't know. What additional precursors, if any, should we expect? So I want to go to the monitor that I'm currently showing you. Yeah, it's up over here on the other side. Yeah, the north side of um, Mount St. Helens. That's the Johnson Ridge Observatory, and over here is um, Spirit Lake. So I do have marked out some of the past eruptions. Over here we got uh, the Goat Rock eruption, and I have an image of the dates of some of the other eruptions. I believe the oldest eruption is the Camilla Andesite eruption, uh, 1540. Okay. Um, CE. We also have the Castle Creek Basalt. Um, that one's about 1,740 years old. Dog Head Dome, which is about 2,000 years old. Steps Anasite Castle Creek, 1,780. Pine Creek Dome, right there, uh, 2,900 to 2,600 years old. Crater Wall, uh, Lake Pine Creek eruption, uh, 2,500 years old. And then uh, down over here at the bottom, yeah, this is the crater floor. And then further down, um, that is the avalanche from the 1980 eruption. Now, the 1980, 1986, 2004, and 2008 eruptions could have resulted, they don't know, from a second boiling during crystallization of magma, um, of magma long resident in the upper crustal reservoir, rather than from an injection of fresh magma from below. Now they think that rather than from injection of fresh magma from the lower magma chamber, if reservoir pressurization and magma ascent were slow enough, resulting strain might have been accommodated by vistoelastic deformation with not appreciable seismicity or surface deformation. So if the magma rose up slow enough and created the pressure, that might have caused the eruption too. They just don't know. They often think that well, you get gas readings, and the gas readings would increase. But during the 2004 and 2008 eruption, yeah, there wasn't any strong indication of gases. They think, they're not sure, but the Camellia, Camellia anisite eruption was just that case where it took a long time 
for the magma to slowly build up and pressurize. It took a long time before this eruption happened. But again, they just don't know. The early Kalama eruptive period began with two large explosive eruptions taking place within a relatively short time between the two. Unique pairing of eruptions is rare among worldwide volcanic studies. A large anastite eruption took place during the mid Kamala period, sending pyroclastic flows and hot ash from the volcano. The late Kamala phase saw the rise of the summit dome, um, a dacite dome that grew over a hundred year period. It took over a hundred years for this to grow up and to get the size that it is, and eventually uh, reaching the Mount St. Helens pre 1980 form. Now, everyone's talking about the, what, 350-some earthquakes since January. That is really not a lot. On March 16th, 1980, Mount St. Helens began experiencing earthquake activity. On March 27th of that year, 1980, after several hundred earthquakes, the volcano erupted for the first time in over 100 years. So, 350 since January compared to, you know, several hundred in um, a matter of, what, a week, two weeks? In my opinion, if there's going to be right now, you know, within a matter of weeks of a, another eruption, more than likely it would just be a small eruption. When the volcano did erupt, it created initially a steam blast, which was 200 to 250 feet wide, uh, and it grew to about uh, 1,300 feet in diameter within one week. Earthquakes became more and more frequent with over 10,000 quakes occurring by May 17th. That's three months. You know, you compare 350 to 10,000, yeah, big difference. So May 17th, they had over 10,000 earthquakes. And at that, that time, that's when the bulge started growing. It grew at a constant rate of about 6.5 feet per day. That drastic deformation, also known as a crypto dome, indicated that magma was bulging from below and waiting to erupt into the surface. On May 18, 1980, without imminent warning, a magnitude 5.1 magnitude earthquake occurred as its bulge and the northern flank slid away. That avalanche of debris is recorded in history is about the size of a million, a million Olympic sized swimming pool. It is now recorded as the largest debris avalanche recorded in history. What resulted was what they call a Polynian eruption. That's where the ash cloud goes at least 50,000 feet or 10 miles up into the air. And that ash cloud actually circled the globe for over 15 days. So I would say, in my opinion, yes, it is recharging. But I don't see the earthquakes. Yeah, I see a lot of very small earthquakes. Um, and they are shallow. But I don't see, you know, thousands upon thousands of earthquakes. I do see the ground getting brittle. Um, example right here as the magma goes up into the upper magma chamber. And I have not seen drum beats um, recently. This here, let me see what the date is. Um, this would have been on, yeah, these, these were all on yesterday. I haven't seen any drum beats since then. And see, they, they stop and they go. See this? We have oh, probably almost a half an hour there. And then it stopped and it went and it stopped. And this is probably the last time right here for the drum beats. But they're not constant. There is signs of slow moving tremors. Example right here. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so it is recharging. Um, right now, in my own opinion, if it does suddenly decide to go off, I mean, any volcano can erupt 
within 10 minutes with no warning at all. And they have had eruptions in the past without any significant um, gas uptick, you know, for all the different gases that they do monitor. They didn't have that before either. So this is probably a very hard volcano to keep track of and, and to say what's going to happen. See, now this is more recent. See how um, my cheat is in that? Yeah, and then, like I said, this is when I pulled the files a little while ago. Right up to there. And I'll pull it over here. So we do have an increase in heat. Um, but they really, I don't think they've done the time or the investment really to to do much studying. Because, um, yeah, this the magma chamber actually feeds multiple volcanoes. And they haven't spent the money to research it more. It's a quagmire. See, now there's a thicker line right there of the magma that was coming in earlier today. Yeah. Anyways, we just have to keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, pray that it doesn't erupt. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all.